Have you ever wondered how some teams can win 99% of games, regardless of who they are facing? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. And when I say winning all the games, I actually mean that because we got to the point where we started exploring other game modes to have new challenges and gain new experience. This strategy and mindset is going to work against all of the teams out there and it doesn't really matter how much trophies the enemies have, we've been placing some high-end players, global players and we still could win the games. Before I dive into the details, let me talk about common mistakes people are doing. Crystal Assault is about timing and playing together as a team but it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to move together it's more about synchronizing the roles and making sure everybody knows what needs to be done at a given point of the game and that's the key message here at a given point you need to precisely understand if it's time to defend or it's time to attack setups and teams who split the roles and somebody is just defending whilst another person is trying to do damage into their crystal these type of setups just don't work but enough of mistakes let's focus on the solution let's focus on the strategy and the setup instead heroes and hero types i'm going to talk more about the roles and i'm going to give you a couple of examples on which hero fits to that role you're going to need a crystal crusher strategist and a guard these are just made up names but I'm going to explain in a moment what these cover. In the gameplay you see on your screen, Lizzie is the guard, Abdullah is the crystal crusher and I'm the strategist. Before I dive into raw specific stuff, let me just highlight one more time that you cannot have a tunnel vision. It's not about, okay, I'm the crystal crusher, so I'm just going to blindly run ahead and try to damage the enemy crystal. It doesn't work like that. Everybody on the team has to run back and defend if there is a strong push. And at the same time, your guard will need to join the attack at the right time. Okay, let's start with the Crystal Crusher role because that's pretty straightforward. Basically, you need to make sure that you are putting damage into the enemy crystal. Easy, right? It sounds like that, but it's actually not. For that role, play a flanker like Shell, it could be Johnny Jet, but even Labula works fine. This is the role where you can actually sneak behind the enemy, you can run past them, but be cautious with that because if you just run blindly towards the enemy crystal, you're gonna resolve a 2 versus 3 situation for your team, which is not ideal. So while you're running to the enemy crystal, try to kill somebody, try to clear your path to the crystal. It's not about avoiding fights. If you can get to the enemy crystal, then the primary goal would be to stay alive and to put in as much damage as you can into the enemy crystal. When I say stay alive, you need to be aware what's happening around you while you are damaging the crystal. But it's not going to be your primary objective to kill the enemies who just respawn. You also need to be aware if your team is around, if you have backup, if you have support, if they are using some kind of utility that can protect you, all of that needs to be kept in mind. We could say that this role is a good fit for players who have a solo-ish type of mindset because they're gonna end up in having to enter fights on their own and sometimes they're gonna need to try to escape again on their own. The second role is the guard and don't get me wrong, this is not somebody who just stays behind and gets bored and waits for enemies to come, absolutely not. So the guard is supporting the team by trying to defend them as much as he or she can, regardless whether they are defending or attacking. An obvious example would be that the guard is still guarding the team while we are attacking, like Ford placing a shield to protect Shell so that Shell can put in as much damage as she can into the enemy crystal without having to worry about getting well too much damage. This player is going to be the player who steps back, who falls back and defends our own crystal as needed. I really need to make it clear that this is not the hero who is just standing there and defending. But in case somebody gets to our crystal, then this person would be the one stepping back but it also depends on how many players are attacking at a given time. So if it's just one player who got to our crystal with half HP, then it's perfectly enough if the guard goes back and kills that hero. If there is a strong push and the whole enemy team you get to our crystal, then obviously everybody needs to come back and start defending to clear the area. 
And it doesn't necessarily mean that this role needs to be played with a Vanguard. It can be a Sindri. Most of the teams are utilizing Sindri and Sindri Head to defend. But don't think that this is a role which is boring and you are being left out of the fights. Absolutely not, because if our crystal is safe, then the guard is going to act similar to everybody else on the team and joins the attack and pushes everything out to make sure he or she is damaging the enemy crystal. But it's not that easy, it's not that black and white, because it happens sometimes that the guard is attacking the enemy crystal, one or two teammates die, and there is a big chance that our crystal is going to be attacked. In that case, the guard doesn't necessarily need to go back because of the fact that teammates just revived, and thereby those players are going to swap into the defender or guard role for a second, clear the area, and then join the attack again. And what I just said means, in other words, that there is an overlap between the roles and there is no strict guard and crusher. Everybody needs to do everything, kind of, but still we have primary objectives. Let's talk about the strategist, the third role, and how it differs from the previous two. The strategist is the player who is somewhere in between. He or she needs to evaluate the situations and based on that make a decision whether it's better to attack and support the crystal crusher or go back and support defending our own crystal. It can happen that a Johnny Jet or a Diggy is getting near to our crystal and if you feel as a strategist that it's better to support your guard and go back to a quick kill and then set up an attack then, then you should be doing that. But at the same time, if you are confident that your guard is going to take care of that enemy, in that case, you would be supporting your crystal crusher. So it really depends on the situation. If you're defending as a strategist and your task is pretty clear, you basically need to land some kills to secure the area. But if you're attacking, your primary goal or primary objective is not to damage the crystal. That's for the crystal crusher. Your primary goal would be to clean the work area. What I mean by that is that on the attacking side, you need to keep an eye on the enemy team and when they revive and try to kill them before they can kill your crystal crusher, your teammate who is putting in the damage into their crystal. Basically, you are acting as a guard, but you are not guarding your crystal, but you are guarding your crystal crusher from getting damage. And if you are wondering what the difference is between the guard and the strategist on the attacking side, it's that the guard is going to utilize like the shield or protection to support the crystal crusher, but the guard is not going to be able to actively defend the crystal crusher and on top kill the reviving enemies. On the other hand, the strategist is going to support or protect the crystal crusher by keep killing the enemies who just revived, if that makes sense. And as a summary, let's check what the ideal scenario is for every single crystal assault game. So you start the game and you're gonna need to evaluate whether in the enemy team there are flankers who are gonna instantly go for your crystal. If that happens, then one or two players should stay behind and do some quick kills before we start the attack. Your crystal crusher can directly go to the enemy crystal and thereby starting to do some pressure. Once you get to the point where all the three of you are near the enemy crystal, then the crystal crusher is going to focus on putting damage into the crystal. The guard is going to try to actively protect by standing like in between the enemy and your crystal crusher by putting down a shield and so on. And the strategist is going to monitor the enemy team, understand where they are coming from and do some quick kills before the enemies can actually put in damage into your crystal crusher. And please, no misunderstandings here. It doesn't mean that the crystal crusher is disregarding enemies and not doing any kills. No, it's not the case. Same for the guard and the strategist. They are going to also put in damage into the crystal whenever they can. And the crystal crusher, if he or she is in danger, or if it makes sense to step away from the crystal, then he or she should do that and kill the enemy and again buy some time 
for the team to put in even more damage into the crystal. You may feel that this is like super straightforward and simple, but at the same time, believe me, it's hard to master. And there's one more thing on top of the strategy, which I didn't talk about, which is personal performance. So if you are having teammates, and by the way, this applies to you as well, who can win most of the one versus one fights, then you are good. But if you keep dying, then obviously the strategy on its own, it's not going to work. So on top of applying the strategy, you still need to be good at aiming. You still need to be like good with the hero you picked. But if you combine the strategy and your personal performance, and let's assume the teammates have like pretty similar performance to yours, then you're going to have a lot of success with this strategy. So now guys, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already and check out the gameplay, the highlights I collected for you. And once you are done, get into the game, queue up for Crystal Assault. And well even if you are doing it without a team, hey. if you start adjusting your game style following this strategy, well you're going to see more and more success. Ideally, you would queue up as a team with players who also saw this video and understand the strategy. And from that point onwards, there is nobody who can stop you. Darkness and chaos everywhere. It's getting Thank you for watching hit the like and use the comment section to give me feedback because i'm really curious to hear your opinion what you think about what i just shared see you in the next one bye